party acknowledged uh, at the beginning. This sentence would be the same under the facts of this case. Uh, were there no publicity whatsoever? Indeed, in some ways, I wish there were no publicity whatsoever. But the reality is the reality. Uh, I do want to talk a little bit about uh, what I have not considered and what I am considered, but I don't want to keep you hanging. I know that that's torture and I don't need to do that. Uh, the bottom line is, uh, in terms of staying committed time, you're going to do a year in the House of Corrections and probation. Uh, that's, the, that's the bottom line. Uh, there is going to be a, uh, a requirement for another psychosexual evaluation. I don't know if it's going to come back the same or different. Um, but it will be what it will be, and I will talk about that in a couple of minutes, too. Uh, there are certain things I have not considered and certain things I have considered. I am sentencing you for your convictions, not your, your acquittals. Uh, if you had been convicted of the more serious uh, sexual felonies, I can assure you that uh, you, would have been, you would have been sentenced to the state prison. Uh, for the, the uh, sexual felonies that you were acquitted on. And it wouldn't be three and a half to seven years either. It would be a longer sentence than that. You're not being sentenced to that. Uh, and so you are you are being sentenced for the crimes uh, that you were convicted of, not the, the crimes that you were not convicted of. Uh, I did consider uh, in, in the sentence uh, the pleadings, what I heard in the trial, the factual information in the uh, pre-sentence investigation, uh, the memos submitted by uh, your counsel uh, and the state, uh, and uh, the attached letters and exhibits. I uh, observe uh, and believe that you are neither the angel that is uh, portrayed um, by your counsel and the attached letters uh, in your memorandum, where the devil uh, that is uh, portrayed by the state. Uh, and I am sentencing you as a human being who has been convicted of five crimes. And that, that's, those are the five crimes that I am sentencing you on. Uh, Mr. Carney has referenced, and I've, it's not just from him, I've heard it referenced, that this is a case where lives have been destroyed, yours and the victim's. Uh, that's possible. Uh, I hope not. I hope not. You're young. The victim is young. Uh, uh, and I hope that uh, both you and she will, uh, it's obviously a detour, uh, but will learn and grow and go on um, from what uh, is, very, is obviously an adverse situation. Uh, but. Uh, I do have to recognize that this is a day for justice to the victim, and that is uh, one of the primary uh, factors in my mind. I have to recognize what you did to her when you committed the crime. I am not ignoring in the sense, or I'm, let me restate that because I am ignoring, but I, I'm not dismissing. Uh, what the victim has suffered since the crime in terms of the trial and the publicity and so forth. But I am not considering that uh, because you had a right to put the state to its proof. You had the right to challenge her testimony in trial. And while I cannot ignore the fact that the damage that you have imposed on her as a result of that is real, and, and she, she talked about that and her family talked about that, uh, that is your absolute right, and I'm not, I'm not going to, that, that does not factor into in any way enhancing your punishment. Uh, but I am considering, and I can enhance your punishment, uh, for the effect that it has on her in terms of the commission of the crime itself. And that, um, that is reflected, and I am um, uh, considering that. Uh, you said, uh, Mr. Carney, uh, I'm sorry, Mr. Lebrun. Uh, you said, Mr. Lebrun, in your, your statement uh, that you feel deep moral responsibility for your actions. But I have to say that the, the consequences that you uh, spoke about in your statement all revolve around yourself and your family. I do not consider you the victim. 
I do consider your family to be victims. They're not you. Uh, and uh, I, uh, uh, and there, there isn't any discussion about any remorse. And I want to say, the state noted it, I'm not punishing you for that lack of discussion uh, about the remorse. Uh, because I, I bluntly, I think if you, you did express remorse, it would be dishonest at this point in your life. Maybe at some point we'll get there. Um, but uh, I would rather uh, uh, have you not say anything as you did than say something dishonest. And I'm going to talk about that um, a little bit more uh, in a moment as well. So I'm not going to punish you for not expressing uh, any, any particular remorse or empathy uh, for the victim. Indeed. Uh, I've looked at your uh, statement, the statements you made in, in the first psychosexual evaluation uh, to Dr. Canigallo about the crime. They were not credible. Uh, but uh, your statements about the victim and her sister, which, which are dismissive to say the least, uh, do reflect, I think, in, in some ways, uh, uh, are probably a more accurate window into your true feelings. Uh, and I, I that, that, that is what it is, That's, uh, and I, I have to accept that, uh, and I would rather that you not express a false uh, sympathy that you, um, that you do what you do and simply stay silent in terms of this sentencing term. So I'm not going to punish you for that. Uh, but the, the, as I, um, I, I did say, the impact on the victim is significant. I want to talk about something that's very important in this case, and something that's a real disconnect between the positions of the parties. The jury found, in terms of the more serious crimes, the state did not prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the victim did not, was not successful in communicating to you, uh, and did not do enough to communicate with you by speech or conduct, that there was not freely given consent to the sexual act. That does, it does not follow from that, as your counsel has argued that it does, that the act was consensual. Uh, what follows, I mean, you, the state did not prove it. I'm not punishing you for, 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 that, for that reason. But that does not mean that the uh, victim consented to the sexual penetration. Uh, and indeed, I, uh, it is clear from the impact of, of this crime that she did not. Uh, this has been characterized as a quote-unquote not serious statutory rape. And uh, I don't want to say that any of these crimes is not serious. They're all serious. But I've sat long enough. I've, I've seen situations where uh, the uh, uh, defendant and the victim are in love. They may even subsequently get married after the conviction. Uh, it's a parent who has called out. Uh, the relationship, and that's why it's prosecuted. And it's certainly more than consensual here. This was not consensual. You did not take the time to get to know the victim, to know whether uh, what you were doing uh, was something that she wanted or didn't want. You did not take the time to get to know the victim, to know how she reacts to various things like that. So uh, it was, while, while uh, I, I accept, as I, I must and will not punish you, uh, for the serious crimes, uh, because the victim, did, uh, the jury found that the victim did not uh, effectively communicate her lack of consent. Uh, I am not necessarily agreeing with the statement that it was a consensual. Uh, it, it may have been a consensual date in the sense that the victim went with you willingly. That that's clear. I'm not saying that she didn't, but she never. Uh, I I don't think you can infer that she consented to the sexual penetration. Uh, the harm um, from the sexual penetration uh, is compounded um, by your subsequent actions. And let me observe that this crime uh, that, that has been, I mean, the very reason that it is a crime is that someone under the age of consent, a child such as the victim, is not sufficiently mature to handle a sexual situation with an older person such as yourself. Uh, you, that's, that's the crime you were convicted of, engaging in sexual penetration with someone who is not old enough to know how to handle it. She was in over her head. Um, and, and that's very clear 
uh, and, uh, and and she was not able to handle the situation the way I'm sure if, if, if heaven forbid she would be presented with it again, and I say heaven forbid really, uh, obviously she would have learned from it. But at that point, uh, the very reason why it is below the age of consent is because she's not sufficiently mature to be able to handle uh, what you presented her with um, on that night. And, and that's why it's a serious crime, and that's what the conviction is for. Um, and uh, that's why she was not able to, uh, she was not sufficiently be a, a mature to be able to uh, effectively communicate her lack of consent or to take other actions to prevent the sexual penetration. Uh, and as I said, I think the harm is compounded by your subsequent actions. The fact that it was uh, a, a, a part of a senior salute. The, the list of the names, the emails, the texts, uh, and your own friends. Uh, and uh, I've got to say, I, I don't know, I mean, there's been a lot of discussion about the culture of calls, and I'm not going to get into that one way or the other. It is what it is. But whatever it is, the letters uh, that I saw, particularly the letters that were attached um, to your memorandum and everything I've learned about you through the trial through the memorandum, tells me certain things, and one of those things that it tells me is that you are a leader. You are not a follower. You are a leader. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, while whatever the tradition of the senior salute was or is or may have been at, at um, St. Paul's, you as a leader certainly took it to another level uh, by engaging in sexual penetration uh, with a 15-year-old. So, uh, I, uh, I have taken that into account. Uh, I've also taken into account uh, the lack of credibility uh, of your denials of sexual penetration. And the jury found, and, and the jury found that your denials were not credible either to the police or to uh, the jury, and they, probably they weren't credible to me either. Uh, and uh, the, uh, 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 and I'll tell you, I mean, the same reason uh, I'm not penalizing you uh, for your silence with respect to sympathy or empathy for the victim, I am to some extent penalizing you uh, for not being silent, but for actually uh, not being honest with the police and the jury, and for shading the truth uh, to the P with the PPM, the, the probation office. Uh, so, uh, uh, you did deny, you, you did not deny until you died. And in some ways, I mean, you've been successful. In some ways, you're a very good liar. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I, it's not, it served you a good stead at some point, points in the past. Uh, I don't know, uh, because of your lack of credibility, how much to accept and how much. I simply don't. The authentic, authenticity of a lot of, uh, your other representations. So I also have considered the mitigating factors, and I'm referring, I, they've been well referred to, but you are young, you're extremely intelligent, you're a hard worker, you have real academic treatments, uh, and, and those are the, and you have been supportive of, of, of a range of people, and I see that from the letters. And I, I am not ignoring that. It might have been a heavier sentence without the mitigating that. So I, I have a given a state prison sentence as requested by the state and as recommended by the probation officer in the PSR. I think under the circumstances, I don't need to do that. And part of that are the mitigating factors that I've just um, indicated. So that gets me to the sentence that I'm actually proposing. Uh, it is. Uh, on, I'll read them in a moment, but on the three, uh, uh, two of the sexual assaults and the endangering the welfare of a minor, there are three concurrent sentences of 12 months in the House of Correction. Uh, the uh, stand committed, often, as I say, all concurrent with each other. Uh, they, um, uh, there are, there will be the conditions, and I'll read them, but in no contact. Restitution is going to be only for the counseling costs, the 7910. I don't think as a matter of law I can compensate the victim's family. Your Honor, with the issue, uh, apologies for interrupting, but with the issue of restitution, we'd ask at a minimum for a restitution hearing 
We'll present it today. If you presented the documents today, I'm, I'm checking the box that says that you're requested to request to the state. There's an entitlement to a hearing. I would ask for that. Thank you. The, re the identical restitution. In fact, the restitution is only written in one of the orders. Uh, the rest just simply say restitution is imposed in uh, the uh, uh, felony conviction. Uh, but the, uh, they are stand committed sentences of one year with those, those conditions. On the, uh, on the remaining, and I do want to point out that the, the stand committed sentence on the endangering the welfare of a child is on purpose. I don't consider that a less serious crime than the sexual penetration. Indeed, the very essence of what you did in some ways uh, in terms of targeting uh, a, a child for sexual penetration uh, is the very essence of endangering the welfare of a child. And I think that that uh, merits uh, one of the concurrent uh, stand committed sentences. On the other uh, sexual assault, uh, which is uh, going to be the 4981, uh, that's the digital penetration. And the uh, computer use is prohibited. Uh, the uh, misdemeanor is a year. The uh, uh, felony is three and a half to seven. All of it's suspended. Uh, they are consecutive to the stand committed sentences and concurrent with each other. They're all fully suspended. The suspension windows uh, will be seven years for the felony and three years for the uh, misdemeanor. Uh, the, uh, I think I in this. yeah, I think it's three years. Uh, the restitution will be, as I've said, uh, on both of these you're placed on probation, different periods of probation, two years for the misdemeanor, three years for the felony. Uh, as a condition of probation, uh, you uh, are to undergo, uh, uh, you, uh, is the psychosexual evaluation that I mentioned before. I don't know what it's going to come back. If it comes back consistent with Dr. Kanagawa's uh, first evaluation, then uh, it may be that minimal treatment is required. <coughs> It may come back different, but I think uh, it's very clear, and I, I don't, I'm not missing, I'm not going to mince words with this. I'm going to say it directly. Uh, you're a very good student. I suspect you're a very good test taker. I suspect that you're very well prepared for all the tests that you take, and I would expect that whoever does the psychosexual evaluation again will know that he's dealing with someone who is a very, very good test taker who, who may be very well prepared. Uh, and I will simply leave it at that. Uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, I am also requiring you to execute uh, releases uh, to allow the probation officer to monitor your compliance. Uh, I'm not prejudging whether you need treat sexual offender treatment or not. I, I simply don't know. I'm not that kind of a professional. But I do know that I think uh, there's enough uh, concern about the first uh, evaluation to warrant a second one in compliance with policy. So that's going to be what it is. And I think I've explained everything as much as I need to explain them uh, at this point. And I'll simply read the sentences consolidating to the extent that I can. They are separate. Uh, on 973-501C, uh, the endangering. 973-499C, sexual assault. And 973-500C, the sexual assault findings of guilty or innocent. You are sentenced to the House of Corrections for a period of 12 months and committed. These three sentences are all concurrent with each other. Other conditions of the sentences are that you are to participate meaningfully and completed in counseling, treatment, and educational programs as directed by the correctional authority or probation parole officer. Uh, you're ordered to have no contact with the victim or her family, either directly or indirectly, including but not limited to contact in person, by mail, phone, email, text message, social networking site, and or third parties. You're ordered to be a good people to comply with all the sentences, and you're ordered to pay the restitution imposed in 973 On 973-49, uh, 8C and 973-494C, findings of guilty are entered. On the misdemeanor, you are sentenced to the House of Corrections for a period of 12 months, all of which is suspended. Uh, and on the uh, felony, you are sentenced to the New Hampshire State Prison for not more than seven years or less than three and a half years. You are added to the minimum sentence of disciplinary period equals 150 days. For each year of the minimum term of your sentence to be prorated for any part of the year. Uh, all of the minimum and all of the maximum sentences suspended. 
Uh, on both of these, uh, the suspensions are conditioned upon good behavior, compliance with all the terms of this order, these orders. Any suspended sentence may be imposed after a hearing at the request of the state. Uh, the suspended sentences begin today and on the misdemeanor ends three years from today and on the felony ends seven years from today. These sentences are consecutive to 973499, 500 and 501C and concurrent with each other. On both of them, we are placed on probation on the misdemeanor for two years, on the felony for three years, upon the usual terms of probation, and any special terms of probation determined by the probation parole officer effective will find their release uh, from the sentence of 973499, 500, and 501C. Uh, on the felony only, subject to the provisions of RSA 504A4013, the probation parole officer is granted the authority to impose a jail sentence of one to seven days in response to a violation of the condition of probation not to exceed a total of 30 days during the probationary period. On both of them, violation of probation or any of the terms of the sentences may result in revocation of probation and imposition of any sentence within legal limits for the underlying offense. Other conditions of the sentence are, and this is the restitution requirement of $7,910 plus statutory 17% administrative fee through the Department of Corrections as directed by the probation parole officer. At your request or the request of the Department of Corrections, a hearing may be scheduled on the amount or method of uh, restitution, of payment of restitution. You are to participate meaningfully and complete any counseling, treatment, and educational programs as directed by the correctional authority or probation parole officer on the state prison sentence only, uh, subject to the provisions of RSA 661A 22A, the Department of Corrections shall have the authority to award you or entire reductions against the minimum and maximum sentences for successful completion of programming while incarcerated. Uh, identical conditions of no contact with the victim or a family as I've already read, good behavior. Uh, you are to undergo a psychosexual evaluation approved by the probation parole officer and comply with all treatment and follow-up recommendations, if any. Uh, you are to execute work releases to uh, monitor compliance. You understand the terms and conditions of your sentences. Yes, sir. Your Honor, may I be heard on two matters? Okay. Uh, the first matter, Your Honor, uh, please note the defendant's objection to your finding as a basis for imposing the sentence that you concluded that the um, actions by FP were not consensual. Okay. And my colleague will handle the second matter. Okay. Uh, Your Honor, we filed a motion for stay of execution pending appeal and asked the court to allow that. Um, as the court knows, it's essentially a two-fold test. The first is... Um, do you want to read it first? I would put the helpful. sentenced to a term of imprisonment and who has filed an appeal shall, before the conclusion of the appellate process, be released upon compliance with the provisions of RSA 597-2. So I do not believe that defense counsel needs to make further argument. I believe that this portion of the statute applies since you are not imposing a sentence on a felony. Had you imposed I a sentence, but it was a, but it's, it was a, but it's a fully suspended, suspended sentence. Yes. yes. So, so as I read the statute, 
I don't believe that he has the same burden of proof as he would have had if the felony sentence was imposed and committed. So you're saying you don't object to the motion? Well, I'm you not. you can't object to the motion under your reading of the statute? At least that's my understanding of the statute. And if I'm mistaken, then I would stand okay. committed by the response a decision of the court. Okay. And I appreciate Attorney Ruffles can't. Obviously, we didn't know what the sentence would be when the motion was no, drafted. But I do think that's a correct interpretation. I'll, I'll grant the motion, counsel. Uh, I'll merely point out that in your motion, you referenced that the grounds for your appeal Basically, my order on your motion to set aside the verdict, uh, and uh, I, I mean, I'm not going to uh, uh, comment. I, I, I'm not going to find it. I understand your representation of the appeal is not frivolous. Uh, I've issued an order. I obviously thought it was right, but uh, the Supreme Court has disagreed with me in the past, and it may end up disagreeing with me on this one as well. Uh, but. Uh, so I certainly agree that you have the right to appeal, and in fact, I think you should take the appeal. Uh, but I would merely point out that if you're successful in the appeal, what that gets you is that the uh, suspended state prison sentence gets vacated, the stand committed uh, misdemeanor sentences remain, and uh, you may want to discuss with your client whether he wants to start them and get them over. We'll certainly discuss it with the client at the appropriate okay. time, but I appreciate the court acting on the motion at this point. Thank okay, you. but given the state's position, I will grant the motion. Okay. Thank you, Your Honor. Are, are you inclined to set any different conditions of bail? Uh, Mr. Pye, do you think the different conditions are necessary at this point? I am concerned that you will be released without any supervision whatsoever in the community, Your Honor. I suggest that the very strict conditions that you imposed after the verdict, and which he has complied with fully, uh, be reinstated for this period. Uh, well, they all under present conditions, yes. And the other, the other point I guess I will make, and I'll say it directly to you, Mr. Lebrun, at this point, you are confronting, facing, uh, basically standing at the time of one year in the House of Corrections. Uh, with good time, and I have no reason to think that you're not going to get any good time uh, that you would be entitled to. It's not going to be a full 12 months. That's, that's the reality of our sentencing system. It, it would be very foolish of you. You've done some foolish things in this case. I'm not going to put it beyond you to do something foolish. But it would be exceedingly foolish of you to do anything in terms of violating your job conditions because uh, that would be a violation of the condition of good behavior. Uh, that is a condition of some of your suspended sentences. Yes, sir. So uh, I think that, that having pointed that out, I think the existing terms and conditions of bail are sufficient. And I would just like to inquire if it's the defendant's intent to continue to reside with his mother at the address that's been provided. I would like the state to be notified if that condition changes at any time. I would like to be certain that we're aware of his location. We'll notify the prosecution in enough time before he moves, if he chooses to move, that they will be able to bring it to the attention to the court, attention of the court before he moves, in case there's a question about where he's going. Okay. So it'll be under the court's uh, supervision with prior notice to the government. Um, my my question first and foremost is that it's my understanding that the duty to report on the registration does begin commence today as with the sentence regardless of whether his release pending appeal has been granted. I agree, Your Honor. Okay. There's nothing further than uh, I will grant the motion and post it out under its present terms and conditions. And and
Morning. 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 Morning.